The Deadlands are aptly named. I didn't realize they were this close. No wonder their crops are failing. The blight is leaching the ether from the soil. And when the last drop is drained, their fields will turn to this. No plants. No animals. No life. And no monsters. I suppose that's one small mercy. So we get a good look at the Blight. Now, we had heard it mentioned before, and we saw a little bit of Blight in the beginning of the game. But we're finally getting a little bit of an understanding as to what the Blight actually is. Now, I had thought of the Blight as a sort of similar to what the Blight was in the Dragon Age series. A sort of disease that stretches across the land, uh, along with an invasion of orc-like creatures. And in this game, the Blight seems to be a kind of siphoning of the magic of that is underpinning the world out of the land causing crops to die and it is spreading and it's going to take east pool soon it's right on the other side of the gate we heard it mentioned in other towns that the magic crystals that everybody depends on are becoming more scarce so it's possible that just magic in this world is dying out now that resulted in them relying more on bearers to perform magical duties but if the crystals are running out then it's possible that the world itself is just dying. And it sort of goes back to some of the themes that we've seen in earlier Final Fantasies, like Final Fantasy VII, the strong environmentalist theme. We could be looking at that here. There it is. Phoenix Gate. Where it all went wrong. Come on, Clive. It's time to discover the truth. Almost as if time had stood still. I suppose no one had any cause to return here. No. It's just as I left it. see it here that Clive doesn't really have the will to continue. He was motivated for so many years by the idea of revenge, but he doesn't have that prospect in his future anymore. There's nobody to get revenge on. He is the one that killed or he believes killed his brother. So there's nobody to target his aggression and his efforts against. So he's just sort of muddling through everything and he needs somebody like Jill here to help push him along. Is it all good? Clive. <sighs> That's him. He's the only one who can tell me what happened. I have to know. It does get a little frustrating when a character in a story is a step or two behind the reader or the player. I mean, we all know who it is we're dealing with here, but for some reason, Clive just can't see it.
Where is he? Nowhere to be seen. Damn it! He's like a bloody eel. What is this place, anyway? Some sort of shrine? Oh, sorry. You've never been here before. This is the Hall of the Gate. The Gate? It's a relic of the Fallen. Only the Phoenix's Dominant can open it. Hence the castle's name. This was where Joshua was supposed to... Yes. He would have stepped through this door the next morning and listened to the words of our ancestors. Would you have gone with him? No. The apodotry is holy ground. None but the dominant may enter. I and the other shields would have stood guard here and prayed for my brother's safe return. Where the hell did he go? Perhaps he went inside. He couldn't have. He'd need the power of the Phoenix. Are you sure about this? Nevermore. Another gate. Let's see if this one opens. really be a fallen ruin. I could hardly call it a ruin. It's perfect. Like it was built yesterday. Have you ever seen anything like this? Quite sure what to make of that last scene, him being allowed through the door. Now you'd think he was able to get through the door on account of being a dominant of fire himself, and that may have been what was needed to get through the door, because Jill's a dominant of the the ice icon, and she couldn't open the door. But Clive is, so you'd think like that did it, but he seems to imply that Joshua somehow granted him the power to get through. Trouble. But if it was Joshua that granted him the powers of being a bearer, then, like, it, did that make him different? I don't know. Did it have something to do with the fact that he's a dominant himself? Did that open up the possibility of him being one? I don't know. It, it's confusingly delivered. He seems to imply that it was Joshua that gave him the power to move through, but that doesn't seem like it should have been possible. I would suspect that it's just because he's a fire, a dominant of a fire 
icon as well, and that was really just a requirement required to get through the gate, not specifically being the dominant of Phoenix, but Clive seems to think otherwise. How can these things still function? How can any of this? This must be what the fallen ruins were like before they fell. It's not particularly uncommon in the Final Fantasy series to have a sort of ancient, technologically advanced civilization that existed before the current one. Like, Final Fantasy VIII had this in kind of an understated way. It was kind of weird the way that they did it in that, where they had the Centra or Cetra, I forget how they pronounced it in that game, or spelled it, that had built the big, like, the gardens and all that kind of stuff, and as well as the technological base of the civilization of Estar and all that kind of stuff. But that civilization had been destroyed a hundred years ago. Which seems like a very short period of time, but I don't want to talk about that game right now. In this, we are seeing what is clearly a technologically advanced, maybe has something to do with the magic everybody uses, civilization that existed before the current one. Big buildings, built in a way that nobody seems to replicate. Machines around, things like technological devices, not magical things. Airships that have long since crashed and are unusable. Things that can't be reproduced. This kind of architecture we're looking at here is not something that anybody could even make if they wanted to, I'd suspect. So I wonder if... I, I figure it's probably true. But let's just say... I Now, I have played a little bit further into this game, but not much further than what you're seeing right now. Maybe like two episodes or so. So I don't have much of an insight, so it's a very strong possibility that the stuff, uh, the speculation I'm about to spit out is just a load of bullshit. So here is my uh, foreshadowing, or my um, perception as to what is happening. This is the ancient civilization, which constructed basically the whole, all the religion, all the, everything is based around, including the bearers, the magic, uh, the icons, the dominance, all that kind of stuff comes from this ancient long-dead civilization. Through the use of the magic that it granted everybody, they sort of became overly dependent on it. They became overly dependent on the crystals, which they started mining too much of, which resulted in the blight. They also became overly dependent on the bearers and the dominance to perform magical things. Now, when you have access to magic for things like being able to preserve food or create water, stuff like that. It kind of removes the need for you to advance yourself or maintain the equipment, the technology, all that kind of stuff. So that ended up resulting in the decline of civilization because the world essentially just became too easy to exist in. Unfortunately, that dependence resulted in slow ecological damage to the planet, resulting in the spread of the blight. Now here we are hundreds or perhaps thousands of years following this sort of technological singularity where things became so easy for everybody that this was allowed to happen. So basically nobody is alive to remember what the world used to be like. Now running into these shrines all like they say you're con uh, converting, uh, convening with spirits and stuff. So, like, the Phoenix Dominant goes in here and talks to the spirits. I'm going to say it's probably talking to, like, an AI. Something which was built a long time ago is still functioning. All this stuff is still functioning because people haven't been crawling across it all this time. People haven't been mining the crystals that power everything. It's just been here, still functioning, because no one's around to fuck it up. So that's my perspective. I give it like a 20% chance I'm right. <laughs> just It's just what I perceive to be happening right now. Well, I'm going to end up speeding this up. So, because um, the next... I'm not going to be able to get through this entire dungeon in this one episode. Though. So I'm going to speed through this and I'm going to end it at about halfway through the dungeon. Because um, it would mean that the fall of civilization wasn't due to some giant cataclysm like it tends to be like in Final Fantasy 7 the ancients fell because of Genova and the meteor. Final Fantasy 8 it was because the lunar cry destroyed the Cetro civilization and uh, it, it's sort of more like the 
Well, in, in the Dragon Age series, I brought that up before. Uh, the fall of the old Tervinter Imperium happened because the Blight happened. It was something that they weren't able to handle. And the collapse of civilization, that old civilization, was not an immediate overnight thing. It took hundreds of years. And that's maybe what we're looking at here. A slow collapse of civilization that took several hundreds of years, uh, which is why so many of the old machines don't work anymore. Because they were just used and used and used until they stopped working. Here we go again. Where will we end up this time? Surrounded by contraptions hell-bent on murdering us, I expect. Could the hooded man really have taken this path? We won't know until we've followed it all the way to the end. Come on, let's keep looking. Interesting that this put us on an elevator that went upwards. Normally you'd expect this kind of thing to take you downwards and downwards and downwards. Now, perhaps this is just a bit of overthinking, so I'm not going to give it too much a thought. But it didn't seem like the architecture or the shape of the structure we went into would allow us to take an elevator upwards where we were. So it maybe it's like in the some ethereal realm that doesn't really exist, that doesn't exist in the sort of space of the rest of the world. Although I think I'm overthinking that, or maybe I'm just misjudging how far down we went and then how far up we went. So never mind, I'm going to disregard that entire concept. We have a boss battle I just fast-forwarded through. That's all what we need right now, huh? There's a lot of fights in this dungeon, though, and it does take a little bit of a while. I guess it took about an hour for me to get through this dungeon, so which is why I'm going to have to split this into two separate episodes, and I'll have to fast forward through a good chunk of it in the next episode as well.